Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal, and this is an in and out tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. Today we're going to be talking about the roles feature, which was added to the 10.0.1 update. Now if you're not aware, roles are a way of organizing or keeping track of your various elements in your project with this new uh, trackless timeline for Final Cut Pro 10. Every video or audio element, everything you import into Final Cut will have to be assigned at least one role. And Final Cut does this automatically. Here I have an event with a bunch of video and audio clips that I've uh, imported. I've got some video clips that I imported from a camera. I also have some video only stock footage as well as some music, some sound effects, and I even have a voiceover that I recorded directly into Final Cut. Now if you want to see the roles, you have to be in list view like I am. So if you're not there, just click this button here for list view. And then scroll all the way to the right and you should see a roles column in your list view. If you don't see one, just right click and choose roles from the menu. Now I'm just going to grab this column and drag it all the way to the left here so that I can easily see it next to my video clips. Now there are five basic types of roles that come with Final Cut. They are broken up into two categories, video roles and audio roles, depending on what you import. The five roles are video, titles, dialogue, music, and effects, meaning sound effects. Now I have these camera clips here. They have a video element to them and an audio element. So they get a video role and an audio role assigned to it. My stock footage is only video, so they only get a video role. And then uh, my music and my voice over here are only audio, so they'll only get a single audio role. When you import your footage, Final Cut is essentially guessing what role to give these clips. And in this particular case, it's guessed all of these correctly. But it doesn't always guess correctly. And if you understand what it's looking for, you will know how to anticipate when you need to make any changes. I'm going to click on this music keyword collection here. I have a couple of songs that I've already edited into my project. And I actually pulled these clips off of the Apple loops that come with Final Cut. But now I want to bring in some music that I just have on my hard drive. So I'm going to hit Command Shift I to open up the Import Files dialog box. And I'll navigate to my folder here. And I have four different songs with four different formats. I've got an MP3 an AAC, and then I have a, an AIF and a waveform. I'm just going to bring all these files in, just select them all and hit import, and they're going to show up in my music folder here. Okay, so if I look at these four new songs that I've just imported, Final Cut assigned two of them the role of music like they should have, but two of them it got wrong. It assigned these two songs as dialogue instead of music. And the reason is, I'm going to go back to my import dialog so that you can see. The reason is, is because it's only looking at the formats when it's deciding what to guess. And it's guessing that these two versions here, the WAVE and the AIF, because they're uncompressed files, it's assuming that those are dialog and not songs. And the reason it does this is because there's no metadata telling Final Cut that they're anything other than dialog. Now, if it does guess wrong, it's very easy to change. I can just select both of these here by command clicking. And then I just choose music in the roles column. And now they're both assigned the music role. And so it's pretty easy to change it if it gets it wrong. But you can actually prevent Final Cut from getting it wrong with a quick little trick that I found. Open up the music browser and you have access in here to the sound effects and music loops that come with Final Cut Pro. Now anything in these folders, these folders here, will be correctly tagged with the proper role, either music or sound effects, depending on what the clip is. You also have access to your computer's iTunes library. And I'm going to scroll down here. This is basically a copy of all the playlists that I have in my actual iTunes library. And here I created a playlist called Sound Effects Clips. And I have two sound effects that I have inside my iTunes library. And I'm just going to really quickly just drag them into my project. Let's see them here. And if I select the police siren sound effect 
and then open up my inspector. Here in the info tab of the inspector, you can see the role it is assigned it, and it says it's assigned it the role of music. And of course, that's wrong. It's a sound effect. If I select the horse walking sound effect under the roles, it's correctly identified as an effect. Now, what's the difference between these two? I'm going to go into iTunes to find out. Command H to hide Final Cut. And here's my iTunes and my uh, sound effects clips playlist. And I have my two sound effects in here. Now, if you notice, here in the genre column, I have the police siren assigned the genre of miscellaneous, but the horse sound effect is assigned the genre of sound effect. So just by creating and changing the genre in iTunes, you can change how Final Cut interprets a clip that's imported from iTunes. I'm going to select my police siren here, right click, choose Get Info, and then under the Info tab, I can just change this to Sound Effect and hit OK. So now I have two clips. Both of them are sound effects. One's an MP3 and the other one's an AIF. And if I go back to Final Cut here, and now you can see inside the music browser that both sound effects have the sound effect genre. And if I delete these out of here and delete them out of my event project here, let me, okay, here they are there. Just command delete to trash them. Then if I can redrag in this police siren effect, you will see it is now properly tagged as an effect. Okay, so that is how you import clips into Final Cut and get them to be tagged properly. And I showed you how to change the roles here in the event browser, but what if you've already edited the clip into the timeline and you need to change it there? Well, you can select it, and I'll just select, say, this Traffic City one here. And inside my inspector, I can, under the info tab, I can click this as a drop down and change it to any other role that I want. Now, if you do this, be aware that you're only changing this individual clip, that it doesn't change the master clip. So if I select this and I hit Shift F, which is to reveal the clip in the browser, there it is there. I'm going to close my inspector here. You will see that this clip is still labeled as an effect, even though this clip in the timeline is labeled as music. This works the same way here. If I change this here to say dialogue, it is not going to make any change to existing clips in the timeline. And uh, let me just move these back to where they belong. Okay, now let's talk about how the roles can be used while you're editing. Okay, so I have this basic project with a lot of different clips in it, uh, sound effects, music, uh, dialogue clips, regular B-roll, and some text and uh, titles here, as well as a little graphic bug that I created. If I click on this little button right here, this is the timeline index. It opens it up, and you'll see now that there is a roles tab, so I'm just going to click on that. And here you can see the five roles that are represented in my project. Now let's say I want to adjust the levels of my sound effects by itself. Now I can't tell, because my timeline is so disorganized, I can't tell which clips are which just by glancing at them. However, if I click on the effects roll here in the timeline index, all of my effects clips, every one of them is highlighted so that they're easy to see. And so now I can see which ones I need to make changes to at a glance. In fact, I can even close the timeline index and continue to work with these highlighted clips. And when I'm ready to deactivate them, I just go back to the timeline index and I click somewhere in an empty space. Now, in addition to highlighting the clips so that you can see them easily, there are these little icons here to the right. Now, what these do is they minimize the clips to make them small and unobtrusive while they leave the other rolls their normal size. I like to use this quite a bit for editing, and I'll show you how. I'm going to minimize everything except for the dialogue, so just like that. And then I'm going to go click on my timeline switch and switch over to audio only. 
and then make it nice and large. So you see how when I was doing that, it's only affecting the dialogue roles. Everything else remains the same size. So that allows me to make certain sections very large and obvious so that I can work on them while not overly cluttering up the rest of my timeline. And I like to work like this because I will take a pass where I'll just go through and, and, and adjust my dialogue tracks, go back through and I'll just adjust my music and work on just the clips that I need to. Let's bring this back to where it was so that I can see. So the final thing that you can do in this uh, timeline index is you can actually turn a roll off. Here I have a bunch of titles and this bug. If I'm going to just click on this checkbox here, the uh, titles all turn gray and are no longer showing up in the display. I'm going to turn them back on here. Now this is similar to the idea of grabbing a title and uh, making it inactive, but with one advantage. It doesn't force a render. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and then I'm going to go to Generators Browser and I'm just going to grab the first generator I have right there like that and let me just make this a little smaller close that up anything that's from the generators tab will require rendering because they're basically just motion projects so I'm just gonna let this render out okay so now I'm going to click off the titles in my timeline index and as I do notice that I don't need to re-render this blobs clip it stays fully rendered as does the rest of my sequence. Now if I were to try to make this clip inactive, which you can do by right clicking and choosing disable, notice that now the blobs clip has to re-render as well as any clips or effects that are rendered along the same time as this clip. Using the timeline index to disable a roll bypasses all of that extra rendering. Now, where roles come in the most handy is when you export. I'm going to close this down for a moment. A lot of times, editors will have to provide different versions of their finished edit. Now, a typical output might be a stereo version, a textless version, which would contain no titles or any burned in lower thirds, and say an M&E version, which is where the music and sound effects are separated from the dialogue tracks. This is very easy to do with roles. With my timeline active, I'm going to go up to the share menu and choose export media, or else I can just hit the shortcut command E. And when the share dialog opens, you'll see under the export presets here that there are now several different presets related to roles. You can do roles as a multi track quick time movie, roles as separate files, and then separate files with just video or audio only. I'm going to choose roles as a multi track quick time movie. And when I do that, a Rolls button here appears, which gives me some options. And I'm going to click on that to check out my options. The multi-track QuickTime will create a single output file. And that will contain one video track and then a separate audio track for each of your audio rolls. I'm going to select the video dropdown and I'm just going to deselect titles. And that's going to be my textless version. So now when it exports this video, it's not going to export the titles. Under my audio roles, I can change which roles are first, second, and third, and whether or not they're stereo or mono. And in fact, for my dialogue track, I want my dialogue track to be mono, so I'm going to change that right here. And then for my music and effects, I'm going to combine them into a single stereo track. And I can do that by selecting my music drop down and just adding effects to that. So now it's music comma effects as a stereo and then I can just click on this little minus icon here to delete the extra track. This is going to be my textless m and &E version and if I do this kind of an export a lot I can create a preset for it. So I just click on the preset hit save as and I'll just hit textless m and e and then hit save and now this will appear in the export presets for ease of use. Okay I'll hit next. Let's just, uh, I'll put it in that same clips folder. And I'm going to let this export so that you can see what it looks like when it's done. Now that it's finished exporting, 
I'm just going to hit Command Shift I to import files and I'm just going to grab this clip and copy it in. Okay, so if I go to it and check it out, there's my clip. This is my project here and I can scan through it and you can see that there are no titles. So it did not export the titles. And if I open up the inspector under the audio tab, you will see two channels of audio, a mono track, which will be my dialogue, and a stereo track, which will be a mix of my sound effects and music. So that's how exporting a, a multi-track QuickTime works. Let me go back to my timeline here. We can also export everything separately. I'll go back to the dialog box here. Instead of choosing multi-track QuickTime movie, I'm going to choose roles as separate files. And I'll click on the roles button to see my options again. And this is very similar to the last one, only this time there is a separate video track for each one of my video roles, as well as the separate tracks for each one of my audio. And this will export five different versions of my project. So this is helpful if you need to send stems to another program for additional audio editing, for example. Or maybe you just have a client that is just going to want everything separate. It happens. Now, what happens if you want to have a little bit more organizational power than just the five roles that come with Final Cut? Well, you can actually create your own roles. In my project, I have this little clip here. This is a graphic bug that I created in Motion and I saved it as a title effect. But it's not really a title, it's more of a little graphics bug. So I want to give it a separate role from the rest of these titles. I'm going to go up to the Modify menu choose edit roles. This is a place where I can make adjustments to existing roles or I can add my own. In this case I want to add my own so I'm going to click this little plus sign here at the bottom and choose new video role. I'm just going to call this one graphics and that's all I have to do. I hit OK and then with my graphics bug selected I'll go to my info tab here and in the drop down Graphics is now available for me to choose. I'll click on that and now if I go into my index I have six roles available in my project as opposed to five from before. Just like before I can I can uh, minimize, I can, I can highlight and I can turn off this graphic separate from the other titles. Now a sub role is similar to a role in that it's another way to more fully organize different elements in your project. But a subrole is part of a larger category of roles. Let's build one just so you can see how it works. Okay, at the top of my project I have these little whoosh sound effects that I'm using and let's say I want these to be separate from the other sound effects that I've created. I'm going to go back up to my edit roles and select the effects role here and then click this plus sign to create a sub role and I'm going to call this I don't know just whooshes I guess I'm going to hit OK and then here in the timeline I will go to the inspector and choose whooshes as you see it's a little indent here and in the timeline index you'll see under effects I now have only whooshes or every other sound effect so I can further isolate particular sound effects without overcomplicating my export. So if, they, if I wanted to do this for say editing purposes but at the end of the day when I go to export I just want to export all my effects this is how I would do it. One warning about creating roles and sub roles. Once you create one they're not that easy to delete. Like I can go back up to my roles editor here and if I select my wishes and hit delete I don't really get the option. It won't let me delete it. And there's no menu option here that will allow me to delete it. The only way that you can get rid of a role or a sub role that you've created is you first have to make sure that no clip is assigned to that role or sub role. So this is easy for in this particular case because I only assigned one clip, the whoosh here. So I can just go back up to the inspector and change it back to effects. It'll disappear from my timeline index and that should be all there is to it. But if I go back to my edit roles you'll notice that it's still there. And that's because I have to quit Final Cut and restart it before it will actually disappear. I'm going to close out Final Cut 
and I'll just restart it right away. It's not enough to delete the roles out of a specific project. You have to delete those roles out of every single project that Final Cut has access to. Because as long as one clip from any one project contains a particular role, that role will always exist. So now if I go back to edit roles, check my effects, that sub role is gone. But my graphics role is still there because this is still assigned as a graphics role. Okay, so that's it. My name is Andy Neal, and these were the ins and outs of the roles feature in Final Cut 10.